Climate change is nothing new. Get out there and do something that you can change now. Shortly I'm going to tell you one way you can reduce the carbon. I've been meaning to say this for quite a long time and I think now is appropriate. And it's time people realised the facts. The problem I have is these climate change protesters or extinction protesters. And to those people, I say, you have to stop this. You're causing unwarranted panic and disseminating false information, which is just perpetuating amongst the people that don't even bother to check the facts. And please do check the facts on everything I say on this video. My concern is the climate protesters aren't informed properly. They're influenced because they don't bother finding out the facts. And there's also the element that they want to belong to something some cause. Get out there and do something that you can change now. Yes, they've listed some demands, but what do you realistically expect anyone can do about it? Nothing instantaneous. You can't just say to uh, your governments, hit the switch and change things now. And then get back into your car or the bus and go home and wear your clothing it also makes a carbon footprint in its production and go home and sit in the dark instead of turning on your TV or computer which all uses power don't be a hypocrite wake up to yourselves, research the facts and put your energy into something that can be changed it's all well and good to say we want to change but if you don't have a solution get out there and do something that you can change now uh, we have enough scientific evidence, um, as fallible as science sometimes is. We have unquestionable evidence that this has happened many, many times since planet Earth began. And we have had extinctions, probably more than science tells us, but we know of at least a couple. We also have a pretty good idea why. We had global warming back then, and yeah, it wiped out some species. We also had the Ice Age. There's evidence this may have been caused by a large meteorite impact which effectively gave us what we would now call the nuclear winter if we were to have a nuclear holocaust. Now these bushfires have been going on for months in most states of Australia. That's just one of those things. It happens all around the world. Wherever you have a hot dry climate you're going to eventually have fires. This is nothing new. This has been going on for millenniums. The point is when the earth heated up, it also cooled down with time. And for those worried about the carbon, almost all scientists now agree that man-made carbon pollution accounts for about 1% of the entire problem. Now I think all of us would be in favour of less pollution. But here's the harsh reality with that. Despite what you would initially think, yes, we should have solar and wind power all around the world. It is apparently a fact that we literally do not have enough land to put all the wind farms and solar panels. That's how much power we consume. And since we are increasing our population every year, there's less and less chance that'll ever happen. So as much as we don't like the word nuclear, there are hundreds of nuclear power stations around the world now. The designs, of course, anything man-made can fail, but the designs are vastly improved from the days of Chernobyl. Even Fukushima was a safely designed reactor or reactors. However, the flaw with that is not having the power because of the tsunami to run the pumps that you do need to cool the nuclear reaction. Uh, probably not too wise that they built it right there, given that Japan is prone to earthquakes and tsunamis. Uh, of course, the governments of the world have agreed that in about 35 years' time, they will hopefully drop the uh, carbon emissions down to whatever arbitrary percentage. These people don't have your best interests at heart. I'm sorry if you think they do, but they don't. It's all about money. 
the corporations that are really pulling the strings in the world, it, it's about the bottom line. It's not about you or me or our kids or grandkids or anything. So you're never going to change that. Some would say that the technology that we lost uh, with the likes of Tesla and people before him and Coral Castle, look all those things up. It would have been great if we had it, but we won't ever because nobody can make a buck on it. Free energy, nobody can make a buck on it. <laughs> it's a sad reality, folks, I'm sorry. But you have to face the reality. So nuclear is the only energy source that we have at the moment. Now, back when they were developing reactors, they had a choice of using uranium or thorium. Thorium is actually three times more abundant than uranium. There's far less waste from the reactors, and that waste is much less radioactive. But here's the catch. They realized they couldn't weaponize thorium. So they went with uranium. Again, do you see the pattern? Now the huge corporations in the world have spent trillions of dollars researching how to get to Mars and etc. Wouldn't it be nice if they poured some of that money into developing better energy sources here? The politicians don't want to spend their money. They, they could be filtering off into their pockets some other way. <laughs> it's depressing. People don't do anything about it that can. What can you and I do about it? Not a lot. We just need to accept the fact that nobody gives a shit about us. Uh, the people that can do anything about it. Protest about things that can be changed now. Okay, so what is the solution? See those things around me? They're called trees. They're not just there for decoration. If you're like me, you were taught in primary school, like early school, that trees absorb carbon dioxide, and they do it exceptionally well. And science has also proven that way back when CO2 levels were obscene, eventually the trees absorb that. So what you can do now is plant more trees. And if you're going to protest anything, protest about the companies that cut down so many trees. I know people have been doing this for a long time. That at least makes sense. People call them greenies. That part makes sense because without trees they're like the lungs of earth. Not just trees but plants as well. So there's a solution. Get the ball rolling on that instead of causing people horrendous delays that need to go to the city or wherever you're protesting. Because you're endangering lives and you're not creating a solution. You're part of the problem. Think about that. Cheers.